so we're loaded up with more squid. I've just had squid for breakfast, the remainder of yesterday's squid. We've got some more fresh squid. We've got a great big fish as well. So we'll, uh, we'll chuck that on the barbie later, maybe. So we've now left this bay here. Uh, the snorkeling looked all right. The best bit of snorkeling, I think I said before, was where the guys had based their FADs. So I just checked the depth. Remember the chart bears absolutely no resemblance to what is actually happening here which is why it's important to memorize the lay of the land in instances like yesterday when we had to move the boat in the emergency as one of those FADs was dragging towards us and um, you know didn't have time to get the phone up and look at Google Earth so I had to remember the lay of the land so that's why it's important to always remember familiarize yourself with uh, an entry into a bay just in case you have to get out very quickly anyway I digress the weather as you can see it's a little bit uh, overcast still although it's certainly a lot better than it was yesterday so we figured would save the remaining islands which are further south from here which are supposed to be very pretty uh, we'll save those for when the weather improves a little so the weather today is ideal for um, anchoring near a town and going exploring we also have about seven or eight rubbish bags that we need to dispose of as well so our lazarette is full of rubbish at the moment we need to get rid of those and uh, we need to provision because we have run out of fresh things apart from squid and fish Just arrived at lunchtime, I think, with the call to prayer in the town of we don't know what. It's the island of Matak, so we previously had been up the other side. Uh, and this is a, I said earlier, is a big town. It's as big as Tarempa, if not bigger. But we don't know what the name of the town is because we haven't been able to get online. None of the charts tell us what it is. Um, there's a town of Tobong, which is further south. So we don't think it's Tobong. Um, anyway, getting in here was quite um, hairy. We had to use Google Earth. Google Earth was the only way of getting in here because there are a number of reefs either side of um, what has turned out to be a marked channel. They do have some markers here. So I think what we'll do is we'll get in the dinghy later and we'll actually mark these and put them on Navionics because according to Navionics, there is nothing here. We can now secure the anchor and uh, think about going ashore for the first time in quite a while and by that I mean civilization. It's going to be a bit odd. So what we thought we'd do before we went ashore was to go round to each of the lateral markers and actually annotate them on Navionics which is our, one of the um, navigation applications that we use on the phone because there's absolutely nothing on the charts at all so we figured this might help some other people and what it means is racing around in the dinghy and finding our actual GPS location and just making a little note of uh, each thing and you can see right behind me as I spin round Liz is clinging onto what we are calling uh, North Ladan Port 1. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Ladan. Uh, it's a bit more sort of how to describe it, more commercial I suppose than Tarempa. Uh, but lots of stores and there's a central mosque and of course in the central mosque are lots of children screaming, shouting and pulling faces and here they are. <laughs> here is a typical local lady doing some typical shopping in a typical little store. So I thought I'd take you in and this is uh, what we can find. And they're, oh look, here we go. Apa kaba. <laughs> so this is obviously uh, husband and wife, I'm guessing, and she has some mango. <gasps> ah, terimakasi. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is so good. 
lovely really good so it seems as if we can find pretty much most things we need garlic potatoes onions and then we've got uh, ikan bilis which is the uh, dried anchovy which we love frying up we've even found some wheat flour and some ground nut or peanuts which we like snacking on and she's showing me these strange crispy type things and i don't know what they are what is this Oh, uh, ch uh, chimmy chimmy, okay, it's squid. Squid flavoured crisps. I'm not sure I'll have those. Yeah, so that's fish. Yeah. So they're all fish, they're all savoury fish flavoured uh, crisps. We see them all over these shops. Then we've got uh, limes, ginger, tomatoes, chilli. This is good. The reason why I'm recording this is because this is uh, a bit of a big deal for us. This is quite special that we're able to get hold of this kind of uh, thing. Hello. Mm. So that's Ladan. Uh, there's not much to it really. It's a pretty sort of, I don't know, modern sort of slightly industrial little town, but we have found a rather splendid little restaurant here. And when I say little, I actually mean big. We've just had our tea and coffee delivered. This restaurant um, is on a great big uh, floating boardwalk here and then stilted up there and everywhere they've got nets with fish and other seafood in them so in between these little compartments here just down there uh, I'm not sure what's in that one we've got crabs in that one uh, underneath the jetty here underneath that part they've got huge fish I mean really big fish but what I like most of all is this irrigation system that the uh, owner has been tending and it's basically a whole load of um, uh, plumbing pipes with holes in them and uh, an irrigation system that allows him to water uh, all of his plants. Have a look at this. So along here is, it's, um, it smells of celery. It's like celery leaf. And then at the end he has lettuce look at this beautifully done and in really good condition as well so he's got lettuce all the way around there uh, he appears to have chives or spring onions something like that along here uh, more plants there and as you can see inside here in this pool he has some rather rather big fish i need to change the uh, filter there we go Okay, they don't look so big from up here, but um, I can assure you they are pretty big fish. And um, the funny thing is, is that this restaurant is very, very big. It appears to accommodate. Uh, you've got um, some tables up there. And then we've got the smaller tables down here, which you sit around at on the floor. And then you've got this huge area outside here. But you have to ask yourself, who are all their customers? And where do they come from? And do they ever actually fill this place up with customers? It's like they're getting ready for um, an increase in tourism that is yet to happen. Towards the end here, you can see fishing boats. We've seen this many, many times now. Uh, they look very much like Thai fishing boats actually, but they're not, they're Indo fishing boats. And these guys will be going out, um, I guess probably in the evening time, uh, back out which is east and out through there into the open sea to do their night fishing. So we've just had barbecued fish, which is the fish that the guys on the FAD we met in the previous anchorage gave us this morning. So it was still alive this morning, we've had it this evening, and it was delicious. Very, very tasty. And it got me thinking because in the last couple of days we've eaten really well. We were given the fresh squid by the same guys yesterday. This afternoon we went to shore and we did some shopping. There was a moment when in the fruit and veg store the wife gave us slices of fresh mango 
and um, I almost orgasmed. <laughs> it was incredible, but it, the thing was it struck me, eating this mango, the sudden realization that we were eating something fresh again. So it's really just a thing I was thinking is to obviously not take you know, food for granted and um, to make the most of it. But when you get fresh foods like mangoes and squid and fish, it really is, you just can't beat it. We've left the town of Ladan having provisioned and stocked up with fresh fruit and veg, which is always a luxury. And as you can see, we're now heading across the bay and it is completely flat calm. It's like a lake, not a breath of wind. What little wind there is, is on the nose, of course. Where else would it come from? So we're just motoring across. As you can see uh, behind me, we are surrounded by mountains all the way around. These are basically lots and lots of little islands. So it's, we have, Get this impression of being in the middle of a lake heading towards a place called moon rock bay which was popularized by a cruiser who named it moon rock bay so a lot of people try to get there it's supposed to be very pretty the only problem is there's only room for two boats and um, we've already bumped into a couple who tried to get in there and couldn't because there were two boats in there what we're hoping is is that uh, of the other boats that we know are in the Anambus, and there's only another five or six in this area that we're aware of, uh, they've gone in a counterclockwise direction, whereas we're going in a clockwise direction. So we're kind of hoping that uh, they've all done Moon Rock Bay and that we're the last to do it. But uh, we'll find out when we get there whether we can get in or not. We have contingencies, of course, because there's plenty of other places to anchor and they're all relatively close by. Um, I think this trip we're doing now is not even five miles, so. Lots of, lots of options. Mm-hmm.